Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we are doing a review of a cave exploration team. And today I'm freezing. That's... How are you freezing? I'm wearing a t-shirt, we're in the same studio. It's not cold at all in here. Okay. Let me explain very quickly my bot inability to generate heat. Oh boy. It was nine degrees in Atlanta. Yeah, which is like minus 11. I'm for still... Everyone. I accidentally touched it for a second and felt that. I'm still internally freezing and recovering. It takes days. Oh, my God. And number two, just, just you know, yeah. hear me out. It is freezing in your studio. No. It's only not freezing for you in your studio. Well. Because you have the opposite of cold man's disease. You have no, hot man's disease. That, that, there is. <laughs> there is. The fact. But there is a method to the madness. Like, you, studios are supposed to be cold. Which is why I'm in full ski gear. Okay. All right. Never mind. And still cold. So oh, for, what was it? What were we for doing those, today? For those of you uh, that are still watching this, um, <laughs> we are we are going to be reacting to a video of a cave exploration that happened in Europe and cool. all of the work that goes along with that. So my reaction is I don't know how to do cave exploration. And I say that as a premise in, that, in all seriousness. Yeah. That's going to be the theme because... Just because you and I can follow a line or jump to another line, yeah. can we explore? No. Would you explore with me without anybody else around? <laughs> Probably There's not. no way. But here's the thing. For caves to be unexplored, right, there needs to be a special circumstance around it. Number one... It's probably on like indigenous land and they don't give permits to anyone or something like that. Or is far into the woods and the forest that no one can get to it, right? So what I like about this video is because we feature exploration here. We have videos of Mike laying line, you even laying line with Mike at Roaring River. You know, these caves are easy to get to. Roaring River, you can drive to 100 feet from the cave, right? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. These guys did something that you don't really get to see in a lot of cave diving videos or cave exploring videos, which is they recorded how to get to it, right? Wow. The process. Cool. Because you normally get to see the explorers just laying line and you're like, oh my God, I want to be an explorer. But then you see all the work that takes place in order for you to be in a position to lay line. And you're like, you know what? Let's just do Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Forget it. So let's check it out. Cool. And see what we say, what we think. I mean, I want to go. <laughs> you know immediately. <laughs> of course. When you see this so video, you, you're yeah. like, is that, I'm a in. is that a sea craft, by the way? Yeah, they have so, sea craft. So located in the midst of the steep canyons of southern France is one of the most spectacular cave systems in Europe. Wow. We are absolutely confident that the cave will continue somewhere. Uh, Tobias and I, we've been there in 2013 and we dove to the very end of the cave, but the end is quite abrupt. I don't so know these guys. We believe in 105 meters there might be a continuation of the cave. 105 um, meters. And if the cave base would find a continuation of that cave this year, I mean, that would be really a spectacular story to tell. It's sure really far off the grid. It's basically a one hour off-road drive to get there from the main road down into the valley. And well, hopefully nothing bad will happen here. This as looks it's cool. quite distant. I to would the next really level. enjoy this. this looks we went nice. further into the cave. We went down to the second siphon at around 55 meters. This is exactly this doesn't look where cool. the cave base You're hiking with your gear for their project this year. It looks cold. Is it really cold? It looks cold. For sure. Look at the size Everyone of that thing. who wants to dive here has to master technical cave diving perfectly. That's a with ghost. Mixed gases and rebreathers. Listen to that. They're they're right. By so the way, let's talk about that. Yeah, but but I don't know if you if you caught that. Uh, number 1, the guy was diving uh, a Seacraft Ghost which goes twice as long as our futures, wow. which are already badass. And plus, he has two rebreathers. He's diving dual rebreathers. So these guys are legit. I mean, this is a next level. And and that, that bodes well into what I want to say. What they said is really important. And I think, you know, we've had so many comments about us talking about how important trim is and look, their kicks aren't right. And look, they're moving their arms. And then sometimes we get feedback like, who are you guys? Like, why are you so critical? Right. If you want to do what they're doing, it is critical. 
we, you may not like that we say that, or you may not wish it was that way, but it really is a matter of safety. Like they can't silt it out. They have to be perfect. They have to be able to rely upon each other. They're going to do a blind cave. They have to be able to do mixed gas. So listen, you just can't do what they do unless you're whatever you want to define as perfect is. It seems like they're going to be pretty much that. It's it's cave 101. There's no room for error. If yeah. you have error, people die. And that's why we have to harp on it when it comes to cave diving. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's about minimizing uh, risks as well. Uh, you can't eliminate them all. And these guys, obviously, cave exploring, they are super comfortable with silt out, full silt out conditions, zero visibility. These guys don't even, their heart rate doesn't even go up. But <laughs> the idea is you minimize the situation. You don't want to silt out in places that you shouldn't be silting out, right? If you silt out because it's super, super narrow and there's no other choice, fine. So be it. They're ready to deal with it. But in other places where you don't have to, then don't do it. Yeah. And it's not like you and I, if we silt out in Jenny, we we know we were on the way to a jump. There is another line there. They're on the way to nowhere. <laughs> and we don't even know what if a- it's going to collapse where they're going. So anyway, I think our point is made as to why perfection does matter. This year, Holly and Max, who are part of the cave-based team, are planning to dive down to 105 meters. Look at that. Their mission, finding a new passage. Beautiful. The cave's profile is just mental. It goes up and down all the time. What's so special about the profile? Um, It goes first down to 80, then up to 18, down again to 92, up to 35, and then finally down to 105. Well, and after that, we have to go the same way back. Welcome to one of the last adventures in Europe. The exploration of the Gunnaru Cave in central France. Mm. In order to be able to conduct exploration in such remote places, the entire cave-based team has to work hard. I don't even know what they're doing. If I did that, Bags! and then we send the jet all rebreathers broken. And after that, stages. A cable railway needs to be installed Come on. <laughs> with three stations in what? total: the uphill, the middle, and the downhill station where the equipment eventually arrives. Huh? How about we do Jenny? Right. Jenny sounds good. Yeah. Um, guys, next we send um, one is JJ. You got it know how to do this the transportation of all the valuable equipment i don't know needs to be precisely synchronized mike we have to Device. set up a i don't even know what you call it Fine. look at this dpv oh, delivery unbelievable wow. and then you hike the what? team brought along an oversized plastic container from germany they're sending that this box will be filled with air it gets attached to the cave ceiling and habitat. provides a dry habitat for two divers. Yes. Can't believe it. Off it goes. <laughs> <laughs> the habitat needs to get in here through that small window into the water, then taking it to its place to the ceiling. They're Hopefully so not next level. <laughs> it's not even <laughs> like, I don't really even really know if I should say I'm a cave diver. <laughs> I don't feel right it's saying that in front of them. Get it through. Yeah, if I met like if guys, I met I'm them, like, hey, I'm Woody. I'm a snorkeler. I, I, you know, I can, <laughs> I can dive yeah. here and there. No, they're they're <laughs> snorkeler. <laughs> I know how to swim. <laughs> wow, incredible. Well, that's one way to do it. I was actually very skeptical when I first saw the entrance of the cave, but surprisingly it went in quite smooth and after two seconds the job was done. I'm really impressed. Didn't think it would be that easy. The whole team, including four support divers, are required to place the habitat properly. I would just love to this be a part do. of that. We had to this acknowledge that it was too heavy, so we decided to simply roll it to its place. We turned and turned it until we had it in place. 
But here, the they could have added a little bit of air. The artificial will be placed at exactly nine meters. Once it's placed and filled up, it creates a safety net for all team members. Sit. Going nowhere. From now on, divers can do their decompression in a dry place. Just, it's actually placed very well. 9.3 meters. Yo, that's your dry suit. Isn't it amazing that just the air pressure holds it up? Like when I got into the habitat in Roaring River, I was like, oh man, they must have like really bolted it up there. Like really, I thought that because yeah. I mean, we're banging it. We're moving all around and it doesn't move. It doesn't move. That's how powerful that air pressure is just wedging it up against the ceiling. Yeah. I didn't know that was how it was done until I got there. There's nothing else holding it up there. It's amazing. Not only is it important for the team to find the continuation of the cave, but they also want to map the course of the cave as precisely as possible. So we can't do that. I don't even know what Ollie he's writing. is an expert when it comes to surveying and offers a short refresher course on site. The recorded data Look will later this. be digitalized what is and this? shared with others. They're geniuses. Which should make diving in this challenging cave a little safer. I probably just drop to my knees and put my hands together and pray. After three days of hard work, everything is finally prepared. Look at today. three days before they can start diving. Right. Three days. What? We no. can just drive right now to Gini and go diving. That's it. It's that. That's my. Look, but this video, you though, could be part of a team. You could yeah. go. Like I've talked to Patrick Whitman a little bit or whatever, mm. and. It's like they'll give us a, a an assignment and we're with them. We're not really exploring. No. We're just kind of <laughs> with them as they're exploring. And so that's our level of exploration. I'm just saying that videos like this really demonstrate the fact that we don't feel like we are the best or elite in any way. Like this is such a high level. What a, we're recreational beginner yeah. cave divers that enjoy cave diving at a beginner recreational level. That's right. Hey, after breakfast, the team will start their dives. But this morning has given the team a bit of a shock. What happened? Sleep? You don't even know how to make a tent, let alone. <laughs> of course, it suddenly started raining, although no rain was forecasted for the next weeks. Um, and breakfast in the rain is a kind of unpleasant. So we packed the pavilion and uh, good to have one. A bit of a shame with the rain. Guess everything at the cave will be wet now. This is a different... Different no breed. issues. We are full of hope, and tomorrow we will dive. Love it. The weather god is still kind to us, and the sun is coming out. With a bit of luck, the undersuits will dry now, and then things can really get going tomorrow. Oh, those are wet. The undersuit. So the situation at the downhill station wasn't as slippery as we thought it would be, but the shortcoming was, of course, that all the undersuits that were hanging outside are now soaking wet. And now, have to dry first. We are now digging out all the backup undersuits that we still have, so at least a few people can get in the water. So, we're going to make ends meet. I feel like I need another jacket just thinking about their undersuits being wet <laughs> right now. That is miserable. Everything in German sounds more badass. <laughs> this guy's just describing it, and I'm like... Well, <laughs> you know as long as he doesn't want to kill me, that's fine. Stop! A blessing in disguise. After only a few hours, all undersuits are dry again. Wow, good. And That's everyone awesome. can finally dive. There he goes. Wow. Looks amazing. <laughs> Can we do this with Mike Young a little bit more? Just stuff like a little bit? Definitely. Just tell me I'm exploring. <laughs> Even if I'm not. Oh man, look at this. Mike, crap. why is there a lion in this virgin cave? Yeah, don't worry about it. He's like, this is the Mayans. The Mayans set that up. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't make you want to go cave diving. Oh my God. Look at this. Amazing. No silt. Boy, that up and down, that's got to be tough on their profile, their deco profile.
Well, I didn't use the heating during the dive, but then during the decompression, I plugged myself in and ah. Uh, that's my heater. The Santi valve and all. That's mine. An I have that. Everyone At least we have the same That's gear. the only thing I have in common with it. <laughs> cave and enjoy the fascinating passages. Everyone is happy, but also exhausted. I'm hungry now. Let's get ready. Let's have a barbecue and Pizza. something to eat. Barbecue. Okay. okay. Nice. That's fine. I'm in. Hebrew national hot dogs. Dude, oh. I can carry some Look gear. Look at this. <laughs> this guy's so legit. Well, they're in France. You know the food's amazing. Of course. We will dive with a double seven cave base configuration on our JJs. Tomorrow morning, we'll get up just before 5 a.m. And to sharpen our minds and bodies, we'll first jump into the river Vis. That will certainly help us to start the day fresh. You're probably wanting us to pause After and explain that, what a double J double entrance. wide is, and we don't double have seven. a clue Get into our equipment what they just said. And eventually start the dive. That means half past eight is bedtime and 5 a.m. is wake up. Well, yeah. there you go. 8.30, they go to sleep. That's that's you all the way. You do that on a daily basis, whether that's, you're exploring or not. That's pretty late, but... <laughs> well, then, in that case, good night. Doug Ebersol and I have made it to 8.30. We have. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah one time. I think uh, New Year's, <laughs> when we went New Year's in Cozumel, you guys made it to 9, I think. Yeah, I partied that uh, night. It's I had like fun. four Coca-Colas that night, so. <laughs> went crazy. Well, uh, gosh, once your upper body's in the water, you are awake, I tell you. Exactly oh, yeah. what we need right now. Felt every centimeter of my body. Now we can start. Having a nice cup of coffee. Yes. Then that, take a nice walk to the cave. I probably could help with that. The coffee making. And then change clothes in a relaxed manner. We're looking for things that we check have. everything. We could help with. <laughs> and go through everything mentally. Do they even, I'm just wondering, and, I, and I'm not saying this to be rude, but it's just ironic that today I'm wearing an SSI hat, right? Uh, See that? Like, have you guys taken perfect buoyancy <laughs> from SSI? Or how about navigation? I can, how about if I give you a nav class? Yeah. Would they be like, what? <laughs> it's 7.29 a.m. The two push divers are just getting ready, putting on their suits, and then we'll help them into their equipment. And then hopefully, at 8 a.m. sharp, it's time to dive. Have they ever I'm worn split time. fins? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this suit looks awesome. It's got so the you heater valve. much in your own bubble there. It's older. Preparing your That's things, it. checking older everything bear, very yeah. carefully, and wanting to be distracted as little as possible. That thing looks heavy, dude. That rebreather. Heater. It's gotta be so cold. All of them have heaters on. Get them here. Got to. Now it's time to concentrate. <sighs> Yeah, so they have a JJ and a Dive Soft Liberty side mount rebreather. Cool. The tension. Or bailout. Oh, I see it now. There it is. Yeah. Any moment the two will submerge and hopefully find a continuation in 105 meters of water. <laughs> And what's crazy is I want to go with them. Like I watch yeah, this and I'm like, I want to go, but push team into the water at 8:24 a.m. Everything has gone well so far. We're in good spirits at the moment, and now we have to wait four hours. For our dive. For the first time in a while, the team has time to relax while the team recharges their batteries. Ollie and Max follow the oh, course of the cave. Look at that on the on the DPV. An electronic underwater logger records their movements in the remote part of the cave. That's cool. Wow. Team two is slowly getting ready. If the calculations are correct, 
they will meet the push team at 12 meters. Ideally, the timing is good enough for them to help Ollie and Max get to the habitat. That's what? really important. So everybody watching, teams at different stage levels with different duties. You cannot do this without a team, right? The deep divers have a huge support team above them at different levels in that cave. Yep. And, you know, various duties that I, I we'll see if they talk about it. Two, three. Five. And three. These guys don't have dual rebreathers. They don't need it because they're just supporting. For team 2, 12, 24. The calculations fit exactly. Max and Ollie are already at 12 meters. The most important decompression data is briefly exchanged and then the entry into the habitat begins. So you saw his PO2. I think that is yeah. worthy of is a 1.24. He doesn't look like one of the deep divers. Oh, I that was from team number one. Oh, that's team one. So yeah, they're diving yeah, yeah. a 1.24. So they, they may change that, by the way. It's a little different than having a fixed set point the whole dive when you're diving really, really deep because they're going to have such long deco obligations that they could end up bumping up at what's called the CNS clock. In other words, if you have too high of an oxygen content... Yeah. or partial pressure of oxygen, you start using up a clock that says your body can only handle that level of oxygen for a certain amount of time. I mean, these could be five, six hour dives. So I wouldn't be surprised if as they get deeper, they lower that clock, which would raise their deco time, but it will, it will enable them to, uh, to have a, um, not eat up all the, all the oxygen clock. So they don't have what's called CNS oxygen toxicity issues and just to reiterate what's happening here team number two went in to meet with them at 12 meters because the habitat is at nine but those guys have so much stuff they have that humongous jj in the back it looks like like a refrigerator then they have the dive soft liberty on the side then they have bailout tanks they have all you know dpvs they have all this stuff and in order for them to fit in this habitat you've been inside the same habitats um you can't just pop in with all this equipment. You'll no be way. wedged in. So team number two meets him at 12. Let me take all that stuff off. You guys go in the habitat. So that's all their job is. L let me strip you out of all this gear that you don't need anymore. Go into the habitat and decompress. Exactly. It's really cool. Now, yeah. when that happens, it I don't know what level it's at. I think they said nine meters maybe or whatever. So sometimes you can actually then not put back up put back on any tanks because you're on a rebreather to basically get to the surface that's right but you'll fly right so they have weights also hanging on the outside of the habitat that's how it was at rory river that they clip on you and then they'll swim with you because we would never just go ahead and go right, right. You're, you're on an oxygen only rebreather at that point they're right. there for safety to escort you if you will all the way to the surface yeah. but you need weight because you just took the tanks off so it's a whole bunch of logistics going on a critical moment because now the push Look. divers have to take off their rebreathers after more than six hours of diving so, time there you go, yeah. in order to enter the habitat. Yes, oh, now that open worked circuits. reasonably well. I was always keeping a close eye on it. Christopher first wanted to open the wrong belt, the one with the weight attached to it. I just stopped him in time from opening the wrong one. Then we took off their rebreathers connected to their new argon cylinders. After we got them out of their diving gear, we pushed them into the habitat. I then distributed all the cylinders underneath so that they were in reach for them, the oxygen and the brake gas. That actually worked quite well. Yes, but now I'm also very exhausted because I'd done a two and a half hour dive before and then another hour of habitat support. Max just showed me that they've reached 105 meters. Both are now well placed in the habitat and waiting for their hot meal. Everything else is just fine. Now we're curious about how long we have to wait until they come out of the water. Now let's cook something to eat for the two of them. Bring it down a dry bag. Dried fish with a few noodles. With a few noodles. And for dessert, there's rice pudding with vanilla flavor. Now you understand. No, you dropped it. Now you understand. You, you see, you can't like have a little one of those little porta stoves in the habitat <laughs> because the habitat is full of. I O O two. Yeah. So habitat go boom.
No yeah. good. Okay. I wonder if they could eat an MRE. A bit of tea. Because that is already then sealed. Then the two of them will survive quite well. Then they will survive quite well. While Mark and Christopher take care of the habitat, Heinke takes care of the food delivery. And I'm a hungry just looking at that. A pressure-resistant steel box protects <laughs> the food. It is dinner time in the habitat, and spirits are rising immediately. From now on, it's only a few hours until they can emerge safely back to the surface. And they should have a CO2 sensor in there as well. I'm yeah. sure it, it's Oli. somewhere. Um, all right, Ollie, get in touch with them. Dive to the last eco station. Um, ask them what's up and come back and report, okay? All right. So they're checking we'll on them. them how they want to surface. We'll check their schedule and we'll double check the timings. 1740 should be okay. Pass and get out. All right, good luck. <coughs> Thank you very much. Yes, the atmosphere felt good. They were joking as much as possible. The deco could be as much as the dive. So six hour dive, six hour deco. Well, basically the mood is good. Things are going well for them and we'll get them out later. Christopher will accompany both of them later. I think it was a good and successful day. And at the end of the day, we'll hopefully all be back at the camp safe and sound and can party a bit. Guess we all deserve that now. I'll wait until the guys down in the habitat have done their decompression and then I'll dive in and escort them out one by one so that nothing goes wrong. Which is and what you if said. anything happens, I out. can provide support. Yeah. Really there are only a few seconds left until the two reach the water surface. <sighs> Long dive, bro. How was it in the habitat? Um, pleasant, very pleasant, especially Mark. He did it really well, really well. <laughs> what a day. A terrific cave, a terrific dive, and we had the right concept. Mega dive. Auf jeden Fall ein mega, 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 mega cool cave. <laughs> it's really cool to dive. And the best part actually starts after a depth of 90 meters. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the best part starts at 200 something feet, meters. 270, we 280. We placed a cookie at 105, <laughs> which wants to be moved. <laughs> They want to go. The cave is gigantic, simply gigantic. I remember how Ollie was diving into that huge black shaft, and I was thinking, dude, how awesome is that? Mega cave, honestly, it's so beautiful, and the flat passages totally reminded us of the wrestle. I don't have a tattoo, nor are my biceps look like that. Everything on the way in and out, nothing, no chance. So there's no other passage one could go. Wow. I guess that's it, 105. Everything's marked and wow. Although no continuation was found, everyone had tremendous fun and enjoyed diving in this exposed location. For now, everyone is just enjoying the moment. Party. That is one job you cannot do. DJ, if we have a party, Listen. Absolutely no way anyone should let you in well, I'll, to DJ. On some of my vid, these, that's a good idea. 2023, I'll bring in some of my tunes. But that's, no, that's not. That was it? Well, yeah, I, 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 awesome adventure. I wanted to comment on the, on, the, on the little parties thing. You know, it is weird. You do feel this unbelievable sense of elation, like this high after you do something like that. I don't know what it is. You're you really feel bonded with the team and everybody that you did it with, and it's like we just did something that I would say less than twenty people, 20, thirty people in the world have done yeah. at this point in time, and it's just unbelievable feeling. I remember that a little bit, even with the Roaring River. You're sitting around; it's just special. Yeah. Just going to grab some food, and um, you know, even even after regular dives that are not as important, it feels great. Like. Uh, our dive at Bonterra Mine, for example, going to that Mexican restaurant after the dives, after we just did two super long dives and we saw everything we saw. It just felt great to yes. get together and, and spend time. So so that part I, I really enjoy. 
Me too. That was cool. Wow. Wow. These guys are, I, I wow, right? Everybody watching this, you're probably saying wow, because they are next level. Absolutely. And um, amazing at what they do. And I think we will have an opportunity to be part of a little bit more cave exploration in 2000. 23 we do it you'll see some videos we do have some stuff coming up i won't yeah. say too much more than that and uh but we're doing it with people that are true experts we could not do that on our own no and obviously this cave as they mentioned is a mega 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 cave that goes all the way down to 105 meters after up and down up and down up and down uh really really big it's actually pale it actually pales in comparison to the cave dr harry explored to 245 meters Whew. insanity that is a mega 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 cave and we actually uh reacted to that video and interviewed dr harry right here go ahead and check it out by the way dr harry speaking in costume Mel during our meetup Whew. he's one of the speakers honored man he's amazing we'll and see he... you in the next one bye everybody <laughs>